so I've been keeping some animals secret from you guys. <laughs> All right, so covered the fact that I've got animals you don't know about. So I told you guys, well, first of all, I, even though I am on YouTube and on Instagram, I don't share every detail of my life with you guys. That is not what I'm here for. I just share some reptile things with you here and there. I'm not gonna constantly be showing you guys what's going on in my life. So, you know, there's that. I'm not gonna be like, oh my god, guys, I got a new animal every time I get a new animal. Like, sometimes share, because it is exciting when you get a new animal. But you know, sometimes I just want to enjoy that animal and not have to constantly keep up with social media about it. However, in the spirit of Christmas, I decided it's time to tell you guys about the new additions. But first, I just want to show you guys my Christmas sweater because it is my favorite Christmas sweater. So, I can't. So it says, all I want for Christmas is for you to adopt a shelter pet. If you guys were around last year at Christmas time, you may remember that I was wearing a Christmas sweatshirt or Christmas shirt for like every single video I did almost. I do. I try to wear like a Christmas sweater or something every day in December or mostly every day in December. I don't have that many Christmas sweaters but I try to be as festive as I possibly can, so I will probably be wearing some sort of Christmas attire for our other video for Hermes. Okay, so before I bring out these animals, in my last video, I told you guys that I quit the zoo. If you guys missed that video and now you're sitting there going, what on earth, what do you mean you quit the zoo? Um, go check out that video and you'll know everything and why I quit. But yes, I quit the zoo, basically, my new life plan is to eventually have my own reptile education business, which you guys have kind of sort of known because, um, you know, I have a passion for reptile education. I love doing reptile education programs and animal education programs. So that is the new plan. So pretty much every animal I've gotten as of late or not as of late, but like in the past, I don't even know how many months since like May or March. March or May, somewhere around there. Um, since then, every animal I've gotten, I've had to keep in mind whether or not it would be a good education animal. So because, you know, I've been living paycheck to paycheck and my career path isn't very financially like, whoa, um, I don't really have the means to bring in animals anymore that I won't be able to use for education because that is space, that is money for feeding and money for proper lighting and everything. Um, so if I'm gonna be spending that money, I might as well do it for animals that I can use for education purposes. So obviously I still love all my animals. I'm gonna keep all of them no matter what, but there are animals I can't use like my chameleon and my sunbeam snake. Arcadius, why are you being so, no, it's so noisy. I'm hoping that Crikey will calm down eventually and I can use him for education, but he's still up in the air. Pip I won't use for education. So there are animals I have that are not education animals. <laughs> so I just wanted to clear that up. I'm not just getting animals for kicks. Every animal I've been getting or have gotten now has a purpose. It will be an education animal. So that is kind of something that I talked to before I adopt these animals or taken these rehomed animals. I make sure that they have a good temperament that would be suitable for education purposes. So obviously, talking about all this, all the animals I'm gonna be showing you today, I did get with the intent of them being used for education. So I'm also using this video to kind of help me with name ideas because two of the animals don't have names yet. So the first one you're gonna meet, you guys have already actually kind of met once already, but you only met him once. So this here is my new crested gecko. And as you guys have known, if you've been around a while, a 
A doll crested gecko with no tail is something that I have been looking for for education programs. Back when I was at the nature center doing programs, I needed, I wanted more lizards because our case was my only one. And something that always comes up in programs is lizards dropping their tail. So obviously I wanted a crested gecko anyway, but they're also an animal that can drop their tail and not grow back. So they're a great animal for education. So that was kind of my requirement. It had to be an adult. So I had to be full grown and I didn't want it to have a tail because personally I also feel uncomfortable using leopard or using crested geckos with tails for education because I'm so nervous about traveling and having them in front of groups of people because I'm so scared they're going to drop their tail. So that's one of the reasons I won't ever use Pip for education. But he doesn't have a tail. He's very good with handling. So that's why I got him. So his backstory, there was a, or there is a group of people that take in reptiles and I don't know if it's like a group of friends, but they're like this organization. So they have someone stationed in like all the major cities in New York. I think they have someone in Pennsylvania. So like they've got this whole area covered. And then when they bring in an animal, they communicate with each other to find it a home. So the person that was located an hour from me came across an old post, I'm assuming, that I made on Craigslist looking for a crested gecko without a tail. And so he contacted me and was like, hey, we get them in all the time. If I get one, you know, I'll let you know. So I was like, okay. And I think it was like that night, he texted me again and was like, hey, you know, we just, we just got one in at our location like three hours away. Um, and so he sent me pictures. He's like, it's an adult. He has no tail. And what made it even better was that he's partial Dalmatian. So you guys know I love Dalmatian crested geckos. And I always said I would never get a crested gecko unless it was a Dalmatian. So I was going to make an exception for this education gecko. You know, I still ha still had to fit me. It still had to be something that I felt like I connected with. But he just so happened to be partial Dalmatian. So it all worked out in my favor. Now I say partial because I don't know what else he is. I'm not good with crested gecko morphs, um, but he has Dalmatian spots. So I know he's a partial Dalmatian. So how they came, or so how he came into their care, um, he, there was some police action. I didn't get details, but there was police action that left three geckos without someone to care for them. Him being one of them. The other two were younger and had tails. Um, so him being one of them, they don't know how old he is, but because he's full grown, they said maybe he's two or three years old, but you know, we really don't know how old he is. Um, so yeah, that's how he ended up with me. And when I move home, I will be creating a bioactive enclosure for him. I have pips halfway done. Um, that was my first bioactive build though. So I've learned a lot from it. So I probably won't post the footage that I took from that build and I'll just film creating his because I have a feeling it'll probably go a little better than Pips did. Pips isn't horrible, but it's definitely a first time bioactive setup. So he will be getting a bioactive setup after I move home and can make one for him. So right now he's just hanging out in Yeti's old enclosure. So like I said, he does not have a name yet. So if you guys have any ideas for me, if you want a better look at him too, um, you can check out the Crested Gecko Care Guide I just recently put out because I have some close up shots of him. But you can also check out my Instagram because he has been on Instagram. The other three animals I'm gonna show you today have not, but he has been on Instagram. So yeah, that's my new little Crested Gecko boy. Now I'll put him away and whoop, <laughs> get the next animal. Now this next animal is a little bit of a spaz when she first comes out, so she might be a little crazy. Um, I also just found her sitting in her hide in her pee. She always pees in her water dish, but for some reason this time, she didn't feel like going in her water dish. So, it's a little gross. So she, she's taking a little bath right now, um, rinsing off. Now I'll go get her. So this here is my boa. Now, I don't know exactly what kind she is, she was sold from a pet store to the woman I got her from as a Guyana boa. Guyana boa, Guyana boa. But I really don't think that she is. That would make her a true red tail boa. And I really don't think she is. I've also been told that she's absolutely definitely not by 
boa breeders and <clears throat> people that own a lot of red tail boas. And Guyana boas I think are a little lighter in color. Um, but I personally like really dark boas because they show the iridescence really nicely and they're just super cool looking. And I really liked her not only because she is super dark and the iridescence shows great on her. She has like this beautiful kind of orangey peaches color to her. And it looks like she has cookies all down her back. <laughs> so she is just super beautiful. She's a super cool snake. I absolutely love her. And so I got her for a very good price. The woman that had her, um, she, what was the story? She, well, first of all, I had been looking for another big snake because right now Kronk is my only big boa. I don't want him to have to go to every education program. You know, he's gonna need days off and programs off. So it'd be nice to have two big boas to alternate between. So that's why I've been looking for another boa. And so this woman was rehoming her. And of course, you know, like I said, I think she's absolutely gorgeous. So I messaged her and the woman was rehoming her because she ended up losing her job, um, was financially not entirely stable. So she was had to let some things go. One being this, this girl here. So I think she had her for three months. Um, and she said that in the three months that she had her, she like doubled or tripled in size. So she's pretty big already. Um, so she thinks that she's probably going to be a very big girl, which is pretty exciting. But see, she's been out a little while now. Now she's nice and calm. <laughs> but she is absolutely gorgeous. Such a good girl. So she is not quite a year old yet, I want to say. She didn't give me an age. But considering she had her three months and she was very small when she got her, um, I'm going to say that she's probably not quite a year yet. Um, maybe almost a year, but I don't know for certain. And that's kind of one of the problems with rehomed animals and adopting animals. You don't always know how old they are, but I do know that she's very young still. So she doesn't quite have a name yet, but she does have two name options. So this is where I'm going to need you guys to kind of take a vote. One idea is Samoa because I was trying to think of cookie names for her since she has cookies down her back, but I like my names to be unique. I don't like them to be super basic. So I didn't want to name her Cookie or Chip or Oreo or anything like that. I wanted it to be super unique. So my mom came up with Samoa. So that's one option. Another option would be Yzma because I have Kronk. Kronk is my other big boa. So Yzma would be the other name option. So Samoa or Yzma. So you guys take a vote and let me know. And I'm gonna go put her away. Okay, so these next two animals, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen, but you wouldn't know that I went and got them. So these next two I got because they were in a horrible situation, but they're also lizards that I wanted for education programs. They were on my list. So two for one, why not? And that is Chalupa and Queso. So Chalupa here is a year mastix. Um, I believe she is a yellow gyri, gyri, I don't know how to pronounce it. So she is a yellow gyri, gyri, however you want to pronounce it. Um, super, super beautiful. The yellow is starting to pop quite nicely now. She has raspberry on her face. She didn't kill something, I swear. And then Queso here is a leopard gecko. Now their story. They were living together in an exoterra tank and not a big one it was a square i want to say the same size as zeros i think it's the same size as zero so just a little a square a little square for both of these lizards and if you know anything about these lizards your mastix needs lots of uvb and high temps and eats vegetation and leopard geckos don't need high heat don't need UVB and they eat bugs. So these two animals have completely different care requirements yet we're being housed together. So I don't know the complete details of their care other than what they were in and that it was filled with poop because I got their enclosure too. So it's filled with poop and I know they had a Zilla UVB which is a horrible horrible UVB. Cause you know, we always say go for the tube, the tubes are better, except if it's the Zilla, because one, it's just a really crap type of UVB. And two, 
the strip thing that it's in has a cover that covers the bulb. UVB doesn't penetrate things. It has a hard time going through screen as it is. Let's stick a sheet of plastic in front of it and really block out the UVB. But other than that, I don't know what they're being kept at for temperatures or anything. So for all I know, he could be keeping the Euromastics at like 85 degrees. Chalupa, calm yourself. Now, sometimes your mastics have kind of a crazy personality and don't like to be handled. So like I said, I always make sure the animals I'm taking in can be handled and will be good for education. And so the fact that the, this year mastic is totally fine with handling, all the more reason to. And it really just drove me nuts that they were being housed together. So my initial intention was, you know, even if I don't keep them, I'm going to go get them, make sure they're healthy and rehome them separately. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, you know, they're both animals that I really want for education. They're great education animals. They have a unique, not unique, but like, well, kind of unique backstory. Um, so, you know, I love being able to present animals that come from not so great situations. So I can be like, you know, this is what happened. This is what happens when you don't do your research. This is what it actually takes to take care of an animal. Because Arcadius has been a great ambassador animal for my programs because of his metabolic bone disease, because you can physically see that he had metabolic bone disease because of his deformities. So you've got Chalupa, and then Queso here is kind of like the crested gecko. So with the whole tail dropping, where he dropped his and won't grow back, she dropped hers and it grew back. So it's another great education topic. So I talked him down on the price. He drove out to meet me because he was two hours away. So he met me half an hour for him, so it was only an hour and a half drive for me, and I got the Exoterra. So I paid like nothing for these two lizards and that Exoterra. And I get to say that I gave them a good home and that they're going to have a great life teaching others about reptiles and lizards and proper care. So despite the fact that they were housed completely and appropriately and together, I am surprised by how healthy they are. Like Chalupa here, totally great. I looked for tail rot, there's no signs of tail rot. The minute, you know, within 24 hours of being under proper UVB, her colors brightened right up. When I got her, she kind of looked like a pile of poop, not gonna lie, because she was super dark, just brown and gross and looking. But with some nice UVB, her colors have just popped. Okay, so here is much smaller than I expected. I expected her to be bigger. That's what the pictures look like, but I'm also used to Zephyr, my leopard gecko at home, who was a giant. So I was surprised by how little she is. So obviously the minute I got them home, I separated them. They have their own spaces now. They're not being housed together. And Queso has all of her toes and all of her nails, which I was completely shocked about. So I don't know if they were just recently put together or if they've always been together. He said that they're, he thinks they're about five to six years old. So the reason he was rehoming these, it was a young guy, I think probably younger than I am by the looks of it. Um, and he was rehoming animals because he was moving. He had about 45 animals and he um, needed to rehome some for the move. And seeing how he has some very large snakes, he couldn't rehome those. So these guys were some of the ones to go. And what I figure is that now you're both crawling seriously. So what I figure is these were probably his beginner reptiles that got put on the back burner when he got into more advanced species because he was also rehoming Aki monitors and a blue tongue skink and another monitor, a couple other monitor species that kind of looked to be in better shape than these guys were by the pictures. Um, so I don't really know what the deal was, but now I know that they are safe and healthy and in my care. So Chalupa, I've been waiting to name an animal Chalupa. Um, here. That name kind of got added to the list after my boyfriend kept going to Taco Bell and getting Chalupas. And I was like, you know, I kind of like that name. so. So I got Chalupa and then because they were tank mates, I wanted them to kind of have matching names. So then we have Queso and I've been wanting to name the animal Queso as kind of a tribute to Moe's because I freaking love Moe's. I could live off of Moe's. I'm obsessed with Moe's. So Queso is kind of my tribute to Moe's. Those are all of my animals that you guys didn't know about. 
Don't forget to leave me a name suggestion for the Crested Gecko and vote on which name you like best for the boa. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss more Hurt Miss videos. And we'll see you for the next video.